Welcome to working with the open color IO top. In this video, we'll look at all the ways that we can use the open color IO top to transform and adjust the color space of our content to meet different workflow needs. To get started here, let's add a movie file in top. Next, I'm going to change the file and I'm going to select the raw one TIFF file. This is a great file to use for our color correction experiments because it allows us to work in an uncompressed format and with a file that has a bit depth of 16 rather than 8 bit. You can also work with JPEGs, PNGs, or other compressed image formats. Just note that results from Open Color IO may appear different between compressed and uncompressed formats. Next, let's right click on our movie file in top and add an Open Color IO top. The Open Color IO top uses the Open Color IO library, as the name implies, to help manage and apply different color space techniques and transformations to our images and textures. This is a color management solution that's primarily used in film production, VFX, and animation, but can also be used in other virtual production and hardware pipelines. To learn more about OpenColor.io, check out their website and GitHub for more detailed documentation. Back on our OpenColor.io top, we can see that there are multiple pages here. I'm going to just expand this so we can see all of them. And they contain different techniques for applying color space transformations. The order of these transforms follows the same order of the pages. So it's first our color space transform, then our file transform or where our LUTs are. Then there is the CDL transform or color decision list. And then there is output where we can specify the display color space. So all of the transformations in OpenColorIO will happen here in this order. We can change this order by using multiple OpenColorIO tops, but we're going to wait and see how we can do that at the end of this video. So before we apply those transformations, let's look here on our setup page. Here is where we can find our configuration file. Our configuration is our .ocio file. I'm going to just click here on the plus sign so we can see. Touch Designer provides some sample configurations for us. There are three here. And that includes the ACES Studio default, an ACES, Re an ACES reference config, and the ACES CG config. I'm going to go ahead and keep our studio config file because that contains the complete set of ACES color spaces that we're going to want to work with. Next up here is we have our color space transformations. This section will allow us to convert the color space of our image from one color space to another. So I've gone ahead and toggled that on and we can see that we have two parameters here. We have an input parameter. So what is our input color space for our image? I'm going to go on, go ahead and leave that as configuration default. And then we have our output color space. So what is it that we want to convert to here for output? We have many options. There are some aces color spaces. Let's see. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. We have also some proprietary color spaces. So we have Ari, there's DaVinci. Uh, we also have some Canon logs as well. And here on the right hand side, we can also see that we have a camera rec 709 as well as linear rec 709 or sRGB. There are also various gamma rec 709 color spaces, including gamma 2.2 and gamma 2.4. And if we go here, we can actually see that we have a raw output. And if I click between the raw output and the configuration default, we can see that there is very little to no change between the two. I'm going to go ahead and leave this as configuration default for now. And then I'm going to go to the file transform page. So this is where we can apply LUTs or lookup tables to give specific preset looks to our image. So I'm going to go ahead and toggle that on right away. We can see we have an error and that's because a file source has not been selected. So we still need to give it a, um, a LUT to be able to apply a transform. So touch designer provides a series of LUTs in the open color IO folder. So I'm going to go ahead and navigate to that folder by writing an expression and I'm going to write the expression. It goes app dot samples lowercase and then capital F for folder. So 
So at dot samples folder, and I need to make sure I click expression here. Great. We're still grumbling and that's okay. I'm going to click plus here. And now I can see I'm in the samples folder and I want to navigate to open color IO. Here we can see that I have configurations and LUTs for ACES provided by ACES. We have a nuke, we have open color IO as well as two SPI folders. So that's Sony picture image works. I'm going to go ahead and navigate to ACES 0.7.1 and I'm going to go to LUTs. And just because I know that there's a LUT in here that I want to use, and that's the S log LUT. I'm going to go ahead and open that. And here we can see the difference between the two. So this was our raw movie file in, and then here we have the image that has a LUT applied that has a nice dark contrast and still has these nice highlights. Alrighty. The next thing that we're going to look at is the CDL transform. But in order to do that, I am going to add another open color IO just so we can see those changes separately. So I've connected my movie file in to another open color IO. I'm going to navigate to the CDL transform. So CDL meaning color decision list. This is the page where we can do additional color grading control that requires the combination of potentially using a LUT and some color grading or color decision lists. Here we have a CDL mode. We have two modes. We have the values mode and the color correction file. So if you have a color correction file, you would use that here. I don't have one, but that's okay because I actually want to look at how we can also manually color grade here. So I'm going to set this to values. And here we have a bunch of parameters. Now we have access to the first one is the slope parameter. I'm going to middle mouse click and use my value ladder to see how it changes. The slope actually controls and adjusts the gain of our image. If I wanted to just adjust the red values of my slope, I'm going to go ahead and just type in 1.2 here for the slope. We can now see that we have this having a red tint. Let's say I wanted to make it a bit more purple. Well, on the blue values, I'm going to type in 1.8. Great. Now we see that we have this nice warm purple color that matches our tops. Love it. I'm going to keep that effect. Next, we have our offset, which as the name implies controls our offset. We also have a power parameter. So our power parameter, if we middle mouse click and move up and down, we can actually see that's adjusting our gamma. Now I want to actually make de like decrease the gamma here and give it a bit more of a higher contrast. So I'm actually going to go up. So I'm going to set this to 1.25 for each of the values, just to give it a bit more contrast. Next, we also have our saturation parameter, which controls our sat saturation. As the name implies, you can really, really saturate it if you want. I'm going to go ahead and just saturate it ever so slightly and set it to 1.6. Great. We also have a direction parameter, so we can change the direction. This is applied. So forward would be, as the name implies, forward or inverse would be inverting those um, applications in these transforms. Perfect. The last thing we're going to look at is our output. So we're going to look at that page. So I'm going to add another open color IO top just so we can see how that looks on its own. I'm going to bring this down so we are nice and even. So here on our open color IO on the output page, this is where we would control the color space so that it matches the specific output display that we are using. So I'm going to toggle on use output right away, right away. We can see how that's changed. The image is a lot brighter, but we can go ahead and adjust that brightness using gain or gamma. What I'm going to focus on instead is looking at the display view and input color space parameters. The display parameter is essential when we want to make sure that our color space matches our display. So let's say we had a P3 DCI display. If I click that, we can right away see that the image is a bit warmer. It has a bit more reds, and that's because P3 DCI displays have deeper reds than sRGB displays. 
Next, we have our view parameter. Our view parameter specifies the color space that's applied to the image itself. I don't necessarily want to change that, so I'm going to leave that as configuration default. But then we have our input color space. So we saw that when we were looking at our color space transforms, that's where this list comes from. Let's go ahead and modify this. I'm going to set this to aces CC. And right away, we can see that the image has a now a new color space applied and it's set to be configured for a P3 DCI display. That's all well and good. We've looked at how to use the LUTs, we've looked at how to use CDLs, and we've looked at how to adjust our images for a specific display output. output. But let's say you have a workflow where you're using a CDL, so you're doing your color grading first, and then you want to apply a LUT afterwards. Well, what we can do is add an open color IO top after this purple magic that we did here using CDL transforms. And we can navigate to the file transform page, where is where we control our LUTs. We're going to use transform. I'm going to write that handy expression one more time, which is f.samples folder capital F. And then I'm going to navigate to that ACES 0.7.1 folder. And I know that I want to use the rec 709 full 100 nits LUT. Right away, we can see that we've been able to apply that LUT after our color grading, and we have this fun vaporwave style effect and kind of a retro look. So that is a quick way to look at a bunch of different ways that we can use the open color IO top for various color space transformations and workflows.